Was this video the worst idea ever? Yes. Was it mildly funny to win with the worst build ever created in League of Legends? Yes. Was it worth it? Absolutely not. Have you ever wondered what is the worst League of Legends build possible? You haven't? Ah oh, well, now you have. In this video, I will show you the worst build ever created, how to win with it, and the reason why I'm even doing it in the first place. Well, to answer your last question, I hate myself. See, League of Legends has always been about min-maxing. You want the best build, best runes, and best everything, so you would always have a slightly higher chance of winning your game. You follow the metas, you check what champions are good, what build path is the best in this patch, and so on. Because you want to win your games. Obviously. But following metas is kinda boring. I want to win my games, of course, but I want to be a little bit challenging. Like hitting Master for the first time. That was... Okay, that was actually the easiest thing in my life, not gonna lie. But I feel like the game has no challenge now. I beat League of Legends. And then, one day, I was watching YouTube shorts while eating my breakfast, and I saw this. What is the statistical worst build in all of League of Legends? First, we've got to start by playing the statistically worst champion, which after 14.14 is Aurora support with a 40.59% win rate. Then we've got to start the worst starting items, which are statistically Stealth Ward, Tier, and Two Pots with a 48.5% win rate. Now when we get gold and full build, we'll need the statistically worst items. So we're going to do Blood Song with a 46.5% win rate. This with Umbral Glaive, Hextech Rocket Belt, Kempunk Chain Sword, Rod of Ages, and topped it all off with the Tier 1 boots would give you the statistically worst build in all of League of Legends. So statistically, this is the worst possible build in League of Legends. Right now, it's slightly different and the champion that you should play this on is also different, but you still get the idea. But that got me thinking, this is only the worst build when it comes to individual item win rates. It's not talking about the full build. So what items would give you the worst possible stats when you're full build? First off, we need to find characters that get the least benefits from items. Those characters would be 80 champions with 0 AP scalings, no mana, and none of their abilities deal magic damage. Since AP items usually give AP, mana, and might power your magic damaging abilities. With items like Sword Boots and Shadow Flame. This leaves us with only a few champions fitting this category. Those champions are Riven, Garen, Set, and Glen. Yeah! Now, we can still trim this team down, since there aren't enough AP items in the game that would give you zero stats, but give you stats like healing and shielding. For example, Seth has a huge shield on his W, so he's instantly out, because that would just be completely broken, obviously. And we can also drop Riven, since she has a shield that can be spammed a lot. So that leaves us with two possible characters for the worst possible build ever, Garen and Gled. Both of them still have a shield in their kit, but Garen's shield has a 20 second cooldown and Gled's shield is on his ultimate. Yeah! So ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the worst possible build in the history of League of Legends, AP Garen and AP Gled. This bad boy right here, as full build with runes, will give you, are you ready? 75 movement speed and 24% healing and shielding power. That's it. No haste, no 80, nothing. Bro, bro, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> this build also gives you nearly 700 AP on full build, but as I stated before, neither Garen nor Gled have any AP scalings on any of their abilities. And for the runes, you must go unsealed spellbook with these secondary runes, since they don't give you any extra stats except adaptive force that turns into AP. There are different variations for this build by switching AP items, but when I was making this build on stream, shameless plug, twitch.tv, streaming every week, I came to a conclusion that ability haste is a better stat than shielding and movement speed, so I decided to not have it in the build. Some smart people in the comments could be correcting me right now that Shadow Flame helps Garen a bit, since his ultimate is true damage and Shadow Flame can crit from it. So I decided for Garen, I will not be building Shadow Flame, but Staff of the Flowing Water, which gives me an astounding 8% shield power and 15 ability haste. But this makes Gled, on a technical level, the worst possible champion to do this build on. I also decided to add boots to this build, since a full traditional League of Legends build also includes full boots. But of course they have to be sword boots. So now that we have our build and champions, that leaves us with just one question. Why? Like guys, I really don't know, I, I was bored, okay? No, the actual question is, how do you exactly win with this build? Isn't this technically just the same thing as playing with no items? No. And let me explain why. 
And also, let me show you how to actually win with this build. Step 1. Win early. This step is crucial because after early game, you will start building AP items that do not scale at all. And the enemies start building their normal items. You need to get at least one or two kills in the early game so you can survive in lane a little bit longer. After 10 minutes though, the game will start to feel like CBD. Because no matter what, the enemy will scale over you. Step 2. Mind control. The enemy top laner might realize early in the game that you are going for an AP build, so they most likely will try to make your life completely miserable. But what they most likely won't realize is that you're also running a rune that lets you swap your summoners. Bro, like for real, nobody ever plays with spellbook. And when they eventually end up tower diving you because they push faster, you are ready with a little surprise. Hehe, <laughs> I'm out. Oh shit! Guys, he's coming! A peeker and on top, baby. Step 3. Split push. This is the reason why this build is better than not building no items at all. See, because you are going for a full AP build, turrets will take actually quite a bit of damage, since they take damage from your main source of damage stat, which in this case is AP. Outside of this though, you're pretty much useless, except if you're playing Kled. You can use your ult for some CC in team fights, but I'd still rather use it for split yeah! pushing. Although, whenever you are split pushing, you must realize that minions are the actual final boss and not threats because you just cannot wave clear at all because you're building full AP. It is actual hell. Step 4. More mind control. Because you are playing AP Kled or Garen, the enemy team might leave you alone in side lane since they don't think you're a threat. That's where they get mind controlled. This build actually melts turrets and if they leave you alone for too long, you might just go through their base and win the entire game. And even if they come and try to stop you, the only thing you're gonna do is just smash your fucking head in the turret and try to get the goddamn turret. So basically the only thing you have to do is just smash your head in and try to get as many turrets as you possibly can. Step 5. Profit. The real reason why I wanted to try this build in the first place was because I want to show absolute dominance on the enemy team by winning with fucking AP Karen or AP Kled. When you eventually win with this build, the enemy team will receive permanent brain damage after seeing what they have just lost to. Imagine opening the post game screen and then just seeing that you lost the fucking AP Kled and that he somehow dealt more damage than your jungler. I really don't know how this is possible. So, your whole game plan is to not fully run it in early game, mind control the enemy top laner to give you a few kills, split push the rest of the game, and hope that the enemy team thinks you're not useful. Now that we have a plan, let's try to actually win with the worst possible build in League of Legends history. This was a fucking mistake. Just a heads up, every single game was played with a full 5 stack, so I wasn't actually terrorizing normal players. Wait, maybe Smite is actually generally broken in lane though, because I can just do this. Boop. And now the wave pushes like crazy. Let's go past them a little bit, because they're probably gonna run away. Let's go, boys! Woo! Kill this guy! Kill her! Big! Okay, hold on. Oh, but, but, but! Imagine dying to full AP clip. Guys, the Nasus is kinda gonna go uh, through our... Guys, that doesn't fucking count. That does not fucking count. Actually, during this challenge, it was a huge problem that the enemy team surrendered before I could even scale and try to play with the worst build ever. So, um, yeah, it took a few tries to actually get it right. We can actually kill this man. Fuck. Oh no, I almost got a kill with... Okay, bro. There's no way I almost killed Aphelios with full AP Garen alone. Oh my god, that was actually close. After multiple losses and a few FFs, I decided to call it for the day. And then I decided to play off stream. This was hell on earth. I played fucking AP Kled till 4 in the morning and only lost. This was actual 
Purgatory. But then, the next day, I decided to play one more five-man with my viewers, and this is how it went. Yes! Oh, oh, this feels so good. Oh, my heart is pounding. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So there you have it. You can actually win with the worst build in the history of League of Legends. You might need a, a few good players on your team though, but, but it is doable. <clears throat> also, I just realized I made a 10 minute video on how to mathematically correctly run it down. I, I'm so sorry, Riot Games. <laughs> Guys, please don't do this in ranked.